Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. I have no idea why my computer just quit the uh, sound. So I had to quit making that part two uh, of Genesis. I don't know what happened, but uh, sometimes the computer goes wacky. So this is going to be part three. We're going back to Ezekiel chapter 28. Now, the one point we were I was making in Genesis, uh, for Genesis three, was one: the serpent in the garden was Satan himself. Number two, was he was a beautiful created being that was created good, originally. Now let's take a look at Isaiah chapter forty-five and verse seven. The Lord says, I form the light and create darkness. Well, what is darkness? Darkness is just the absence of light, is it not? Cold is the absence of heat. So he says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. What? The Lord creates evil? Sort of, yeah. I mean, after all, the Lord created Satan good, and then Satan got puffed up with pride in his heart, and then iniquity or wickedness and evil was found in, in him. So technically, God did create evil. However, originally, God created everything good. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Want more proof? Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. See, on the sixth day, God made everything, and it was all good, even Satan. It was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So, let's go back to Ezekiel. Uh, darn, I guess we're going to have to go back, because, you know, it's, it's tough for uh, listeners when you listen to one thing, and then something else comes along. So, let's go back. Ezekiel 28, verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Obviously, this is going to be Satan. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now, why am I going this route? Well, guess what? Satan was in the Garden of Eden. Eve was not conversing with a snake. She was conversing with Satan, who was perfect in beauty and full of wisdom. She, you know, she wasn't talking to a snake hanging from an apple tree. I mean, that's the fairy tale that the satanic churches teach you. No, she's looking at a very intelligent, beautiful being who's offering her knowledge. Verse 13. Well, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Oh yeah, Satan was in Eden, the garden of God. He wasn't a talking snake. Every precious stone was I covering, the sardius, the topaz, uh, topaz and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in, the, in thee in the day that thou wast created, not born. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I've mentioned before, a cherub's an angel, 
And what did he cover? He covered the throne of God. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. No man has been ever been on the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, not born. Thou was perfect. You see, Satan was perfect in his ways. He was good in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. What's iniquity? Sin, evil, wickedness. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Well, how, how is it violence? How, how, what? What? What's up with this? Violence? By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of of the stones of fire. All right, you want to know about the violence? Go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Isn't a war violent? Oh, yeah. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. A figure of speech. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not. And neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Why is it an old serpent? Because it had been around in the Garden of Eden. It's been around for a long, long time. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And that's us. That's all of us. I guarantee you Satan's got me deceived, and you too, in some manner or form. Not completely, but... And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel 28, verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Yeah, what, what, do you, what happens in a war? People get killed. Satan tried to kill God. The creature tried to destroy the creator. Very, very dumb move, if you ask me. Uh, so, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. See, Eve wasn't talking to a snake. She's, she's talking to maybe one of if not the most beautiful of God's creation, certainly one of his most beautiful. i That's my opinion. But he was beautiful. How much? I don't know. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. You see, Satan's called an angel of light. But the Lord says, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them 
that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. How is this fulfilled? Let's take a look. Well, this is fulfilled in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And then in verse 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. You know, I was, uh, I think we should continue reading Ezekiel chapter 28. Oh, uh, okay, let's see. We stopped in verse 19. Let's go to verse 20. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Zidon. Uh, Zidon was, if memory serves me correctly, was inhabited by the children of Canaan. You ever heard of the curse of Canaan? Noah? But I'm not 100% sure, but this isn't about Zidon, so let's just go. Son of man, set thy face against Zidon, and prophesy, prophecy against it. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Zidon, and I will be glorified in the midst of thee, and they shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall have executed judgments in her, and shall be sanctified in her. For I will send into her pestilence, that's disease, and blood into her streets. That's death, people. You know, when, when, when you, all your blood comes out of your body, you're dead. That's it. And the wounded shall be judged in the midst of her by the sword upon her on every side. And they shall know that I am the Lord. And there shall be no more a prickling briar unto the house of Israel, nor any grieving thorn of all that are round about them, that despise them, and they shall know that I am the Lord God. Uh, didn't God tell Adam that he would till the ground and there'd be thorns and thistles? But here it says, And there shall be no more a prickling briar unto the house of Israel, nor any grieving thorn, of all that are round about them. Paul was given a thorn in the flesh. Think about that. Jesus was given a crown of thorns. Think about that. Verse 25. Thus saith the Lord God, When I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen, then shall they dwell in their land, that I have given to my servant Jacob. And they shall dwell safely therein, and shall build houses and plant vineyards. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God. You see, people, God is going to execute judgments upon those that despise Israel. And if you think it, you're talking about the that little country in the Middle East that hates Jesus Christ, you got a surprise coming. I suggest you read uh, Galatians 3.29. All right, this is going to be part three. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.